welcome dear students uh, welcome to ten film uh, ten film technology course lecture number uh, 28 uh, in this section it's, uh, you know that uh, we are having a discussions on common deposition methods for uh, thin film and ic fabrications so here in this particular lectures uh, uh, we will continue the discussions with the poly uh, crystalline silicon depositions i am dr purvez ahmed so let's proceed towards our discussions uh, with polycrystalline silicon depositions. So uh, for the polycrystalline uh, silicon depositions, we have uh, the reaction just like you can see it here. We have uh, silicon tetrahydrides, and that is uh, when uh, heated up to 600 degrees centigrade. So we get the silicons along with that, we get the hydrogen stuff. So it's the temperatures. So uh, here uh, we, we, have, uh, we have a plot between the growth rates uh, as, a functions of the, uh, as a function of the temperature. So here you can see that uh, we have different uh, uh, gases uh, and which the hydrogens, uh, uh, I mean the hydrogen molecules work as a carrier gas for the, uh, for the solid curl, whereas uh, uh, nitrogen has been utilized for uh, silicon tetrahydrides as a carrier gas. So here uh, you can observe for yourself that is uh, uh, the growth rate uh, is increased with the with the temperatures. I mean here you can see it uh, here. Uh, that is uh, we start from uh, these locations and here you can see that uh, with all gases. I mean here uh, only for the silicon tetrahydrides uh, we utilize nitrogen as a uh, carrier gas, uh, but uh, in all others we utilize hydrogen as the carrier gas. So here uh, you can see uh, the growth rates for uh, different gases, and it's quite easy to observe that the growth rate is uh, increasing uh, with the increase in the uh, temperatures. So be remember that this kind of the uh, I mean the, the techniques uh, are the polycrystalline uh, silicon depositions. It has the applications. They have particular importance and the gates of the MOSFETs uh, usually, uh, I mean it's usually uh, deposited in a low pressure uh, chemical vapor deposition chamber uh, at uh, 25 to 150 pascals uh, pressures uh, and the temperatures uh, that can be, uh, that can be during the deposition of the polycrystalline silicons, it should be in the range of 600 to 650 degrees centigrade. Uh, while the deposition rates uh, 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 in this particular technique should be in the range of 10 to uh, 25 nanometers per uh, minute. So uh, silicon uh, tetrahydride is preferred. Why is preferred? Because of its lower deposition uh, temperature. I mean here you can see that the deposition temperature is almost uh, I mean it's, uh, around 700, uh, 600 degrees centigrade. So this is why it's been preferred to utilize silicon tetrahydrides for uh, it, uh, because of its lower uh, uh, deposition uh, temperatures. So here we have another graph. In this graph, uh, we have we have plotted uh, the deposition rate. So what is the deposition uh, pressures at millitor? So here you can see. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the, the the dots, the black dots, uh, it's, it stand for the polycrystalline silicons, while for uh, the rectangle. Uh, the, the triangles uh, it basically stands for are the mixture. So here, uh, this is uh, particularly a re we we have shown relations that is uh, the deposition rates of the polysilicon as a functions of the uh, as a functions of the as a function of the temperature and saline uh, flow rates. Uh, that is after uh, Watson's and uh, uh, uh and uh, we, we have printed uh, this uh, by the formations of the publishers. That is the Electrochemical Society. I mean, uh, this, uh, I mean, the plot is being uh, taken from there uh, with the formations of the, uh, I mean, the, the, with the formation of the publishers. So here you can see it. Uh, uh, I mean, it's, uh, uh, we have uh, the deposition rates and that's been plotted uh, uh, with respect to uh, the deposition pressures and millitor and also the, the, the temperature. So you can see here, uh, when we, we have a lower temperature that is around 560 degrees centigrade, so here this particular uh, temperature, uh, we can have a mixtures of the polycrystallines uh, and along with that we can have what, uh, we can have uh, the mixtures, uh, I mean so that can be uh, 
what uh, they can be uh, amorphous or that can be a poly uh, uh, polycrystalline so usually amorphous uh, usually we have uh, uh, the amorphous uh, silicons when the depositions uh, take place at a temperature smaller than 500 uh, and 75 degrees centigrade that's why we have shown it here uh, 560 degrees centigrade uh, and here as well you can see it uh, 570 degrees centigrade so that's why we're saying that when the temperatures is smaller than 500 uh, and 75 degrees centigrade so we usually get uh, amorphous uh, silicons uh, uh, that deposited uh, i mean we have the deposition of amorphous silicons uh, but uh, uh, maybe poly uh, uh, we, we may also have poly uh, crystallines if the deposition rate is low enough i mean here uh, you can see that we have the deposition rate so uh, here you can easily observe that though the temperature is smaller, that is 560, I mean it's smaller than uh, 575, uh, but uh, when the deposition rate is low, I mean here, uh, you can see it here, the deposition rate is almost around, uh, I mean the deposition rate is almost, almost equal to uh, 1. So here you can see that at lower deposition rate, we can also have polycrystalline. I mean, uh, even if we, we utilize a lower temperature, so even at lower temperature, we can get the, uh, the, uh, the polycrystalline silicon, but in that particular conditions, the deposition rate should be low. That's why we can see, and both of these cases, that is uh, 560 and 5, uh, 570 degrees centigrade, we can see, uh, we can see the polycrystalline silicon, and like in that, we can get uh, the mixture. Uh, here you can see. Uh, but that, that's, that's why we are saying here that uh, we normally get, uh, amorphous silicons at a temperature smaller than 575 but along with that we can get uh, we can get the polycrystalline but here is the conditions for the polycrystalline that is at the deposition rate is low enough so here you can see that we have a uh, low enough deposition rate so that's why in both these cases uh, we get what we can get polycrystalline uh, silicon uh, so uh, we can also have a columnar grain structures or texture uh, uh, and uh, the grains uh, will grow when annealed. I mean, uh, normally we, we can also have a uh, 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 grain structure or col uh, columnar grain structures uh, uh, that can grow uh, when we anneal the samples uh, at a higher temperature. So when anneal amorphous, uh, whenever we're trying to anneal the uh, amorphous silicon, so it will become polycrystalline with even larger grain size than the polycrystalline under the same annealing i mean we can get or uh, we can convert uh, the amorphous silicons uh, into uh, polycrystallines by uh, annealing uh, but we remember uh, when we do the annealing so the grain size may be larger than the polycrystallicon uh, under the same uh, annealing conditions so here uh, we uh, you can see here you can observe the, the grain structures and the resistivity uh, of the uh, of the thin film that uh, thin film of the uh, the uh, of the silicons uh, uh, are polysilicon that we have grown under different conditions. So uh, these are basically uh, I mean you can see different uh, uh, micrograph. Uh, these these are basically the TM micrograph. Uh, the, the number A is shown the undope uh, uh, the undope structure. B is the dope. Uh, C is for undope and heat uh, heat treated. C is dope and heat treated. So what actually we have at number A, basically these are the time uh, cross section of CVD for uh, of CVD polycrystalline film deposited at uh, 650 degrees centigrade. Now what, what is meaning or what we can see here at this particular structure is the uh, is, uh, deposited uh, undoped film uh, and it basically shows uh, the thin film, uh, the thin film uh, grains and the columnar uh, structure i mean the, you can observe here uh, just like we have a columnar uh, structures of the uh, thin film uh, so what about the b uh, here this is uh, uh, the as deposited uh, uh, phosphorus uh, dome film and it shows much larger uh, grain size uh, as compared to the previous one here you can see it is is much grain uh, much larger grain size uh, in the uh, previous one uh, and number C uh, this is basically the anneal uh, anneal at uh, 1000 degrees centigrade 
and it's the end of film and it shows a uh, letter grain boundaries as compared to this one uh, the letter grain uh, boundaries uh, as compared to uh, a uh, and uh, as compared to a and what about the d uh, d is basically against the anneal uh, uh, the anneal sample uh, that is being anneal at 1000 degrees centigrade and, and is the uh, part sports uh, dope uh, films uh, that shows uh, even uh, dense of grains uh, dense of grains uh, growth uh, uh, as compared to uh, the b i mean as compared to uh, this one and we remember the, the, this micrograph is being reproduced here for this particular lecture and we spread it with the formation of the electrochemical society uh, i mean this, this is the micrograph so what actually we get against uh, here uh, you can see that we applied the resistivity in ohm centimeters uh, versus, uh, versus the, uh, the the phosphorus uh, concentrations i mean the phosphorus that we dope in the uh, silicon and polycrystalline silicon uh, so we have observed the, the resistivity as a function of the uh, phosphorus concentrations and uh, per centimeter cube so uh, here you can see that the resistivity of the anneal phosphorus uh, implanted uh, silicons uh, film as a function of the phosphorus concentrations so here uh, uh, you can see that we have uh, LP the LP basically stand for the low pressure uh, chemical vapor depositions and 580 is basically referred to the temperatures the FE basically mean the uh, atmospheric pressures, chemical vapor depositions, and 960 is basically referred to the temperature uh, uh, that is 10 degrees centigrade. 9, 960 mean 960 degrees centigrade. So again, here uh, the same logic apply. Uh, so, uh, Uh, it's okay. So uh, uh, what actually you can see here again is uh, we can we can we can see the mixture. I mean uh, we can get the, uh, we we can have the amorphous structures, and uh, we 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 can have the poly uh, polycrystalline structure as well. And this particular uh, uh, and this particular figure, this particular uh, I mean uh, this particular graph. So uh, you can observe trap states. Uh, that is uh, the tra uh, trap uh, states and uh, and scattering at a uh, grain boundaries, uh, a trap state and gray uh, and uh, scattering at grain boundaries uh, limit the uh, resistivity. I mean, here you can see that uh, we have the resistivity and the resistivity uh, that is uh, being limited by what uh, the trap state that is uh, dopen and active when a uh, trapping is there. I mean, when we have trapping, so here you can see that uh, there exists the trapping. Uh, so when trapping is there. So the trap state and the spread uh, and the scattering at the grand boundary is basically limits uh, uh, the resistivity so that you can easily observe here in this particular structure so at higher dopings i mean uh, when we have uh, the dopant concentrations higher so the trap states are all uh, the, uh, the trap states are all filled and cannot further reduce uh, the active dopant uh, concentration uh, so this is all you can see there for yourself and you can clearly observe it if you're interested so it's better to cut uh, it's better to uh, I mean uh, to have a look at the details that that's given in this particular paper later on maybe we will give uh, the details of these figures uh, but uh, all these details is already given in the reference book or the textbooks uh, uh, that we have given inside the, uh, the, the start in the starting lectures so a deposition rate and oxidation is of the silicon so here uh, again you can see uh, you, you have this uh, i mean we have these figures uh, i mean this sketch and which we have plotted uh, the deposition rate in oxton uh, angstrom uh, per minute versus the saline partial pressure so again here you can see that uh, uh, i mean the deposition rate uh, i mean it's increases uh, while the increase in the temperatures so again you can see that uh, we have uh, uh, the uh, polycrystalline structures and along with that we can get the max structures as well uh, so here's uh, i mean the same concept applies as we mentioned on the previous slide so the de deposition rate uh, what actually we mean here uh, is mean that the deposition rate should be proportioned to uh, the pressures uh, since uh, the rate uh, is approximately equal to uh, k as uh, c uh, 
divided by n or for uh, edge is very very greater than the ks but actually uh, it, it's sublinear it's sublinear so why is this this is because at higher rate uh, at a higher rate, it is determined by desorptions of the reactions uh, of product in the hydrogen atmosphere uh, rather than the gas transport onto the uh, surface. So oxidations of the poly uh, crystallines is normally uh, are usually happened uh, at temperatures between 900 to 1000 degrees centigrade and, and, uh, and is basically a, uh, uh, some sort of the dry oxidations. Uh, Undope or slightly doped polysilicons uh, oxidizes at rate between uh, data of, uh, 111 uh, and uh, data of 100 uh, single crystal uh, silicon. Phosphorus dope uh, polycrystalline uh, silicon oxidizes faster than the undope or lightly uh, doped one. So that's all we have for this lecture. Thanks for watching. So see you in next lecture with further details. Uh, Tell then. Bye bye.